morning. Well, good morning and welcome to this uh, Sunday worship for the 31st of January 2021. And it's the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. And I hope you're all well and staying safe. I gather that some of you might have had the um, coronavirus vaccine by now. And uh, I hope you didn't have too many side effects. I gather that some people can feel um, like they're a bit nauseous and others have had headaches, I hear. But of course, this, the side effects are um, a good consequence, really, um, and far outweighed by the benefits of having the vaccine. So there we go. I've got to wait for mine. I think I've got a few weeks yet before I my group of uh, individuals are, are called so um, yeah stay safe and um, and hopefully we can meet in church soon but of course at the moment it is still too dangerous and unfortunately the numbers of fatalities due to this virus are still incredibly high and we will remember all those that have lost their lives during this pandemic in our prayers for others later. So our call to worship is inspired by our gospel reading this morning. As people, as a group, as a community of faith, we gather in the spirit to listen, to speak, to worship, to pray, to be with God. Because we know it is out of God's authority, it is out of God's law, that we live. Hallelujah. And we share an opening prayer and a prayer of illumination. Loving God, unstop our ears, that we may hear your word proclaimed this day. Open our minds and hearts to be changed. Free us from the unclean spirits of worry, fear, destruction and pride. Teach us, Lord, that we may follow you more faithfully. And in your name we pray. Amen. And so we join together in song, Everlasting Place. There is a place where we can go if we feel all alone. To calm our fears, wipe away our tears, we turn to the cross.
God with our prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, whose touch can heal the broken places of life, touch us today. God of peace, whose spirit of peace can quiet our spirits of confusion and despair, reassure us today. Forgiving God, whose call to repentance promises grace upon grace, Place your mercy in our souls today. You who heal the sick and liberate the imprisoned, who bring justice in the midst of oppression and strength in the midst of weakness, pour out your spirit of power upon us today. Open our hearts to new faithfulness, redirect our waywardness and hold us gently in your goodness. We confess our need to you and return to you with our hearts filled with hope, remembering the promises that you have made to us. May your name be glorified in us and through us. And we ask it through Jesus Christ, our, your only begotten Son, who is our Lord, our Saviour, our brother and our friend. collect these prayers together by sharing the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we hear from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. Today's reading is from Mark, chapter 1 verses 21 to 28, a man with an evil spirit. Jesus and his disciples came to the town of Capernaum and on the next Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. The people who heard him were amazed at the way he taught, for he wasn't like the teachers of the law Instead, he taught with authority. Just then, a man with an evil spirit in him came into the synagogue and screamed, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you here to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's holy messenger. Jesus ordered the spirit, Be quiet and come out of the man. 
The evil spirit shook the man hard, gave a loud scream and came out of him. The people were all so amazed that they started saying to one another, what is this? Is it some kind of new teaching? This man has authority to give orders to the evil spirits and they obey him. And so the news about Jesus spread quickly everywhere in the province of Galilee. Thanks be to God for this reading from his word. Amen. I'm breaking up the sermon into two parts and focusing on the scripture readings individually. Mark describes the first miracles performed by Jesus the exorcism of an unclean spirit. As we see from the chapter and verse numbers, this event takes place at the very start of Jesus's ministry. Mark wastes no time in telling us about the teaching and miracles of Jesus. There is no prologue of genealogy, virgin conception and birth narrative. Mark goes straight into Jesus' public ministry and actions. For me, the key elements in this passage are authority, amazement, recognition and power. Jesus' authoritative teaching takes the form of the spoken word of God and contrasts with that of the scribes whose teaching came out of the Old Testament scriptures and from other rabbis. Jesus' direct, personal and at times forceful teaching was so different from anything that has gone before that it filled people with amazement. However, Jesus' authority was not limited to his teaching and words. His authority was also emphasised by his actions. As we read here with the exorcism of an unclean spirit. What is this? a new teaching with authority. He commands the unclean spirits and they obey him. Power is quite in evidence throughout this exorcism story. Indeed, the understanding of the times, the issue of power was very important and especially related to where real power lies. Life was often seen as a struggle with powers that could not be controlled. That is, the earthly powers in the form of the Roman Empire, together with the spiritual powers, and that is the dynamic forces and their perceived influences on the people of the day. The unclean spirit takes the offensive immediately, calling out Jesus' name and title, in order to gain some advantage over the exorcist. Jesus' presence threatens not its existence as much as its control over the possessed man. Jesus' rebuke and banishment of the unclean spirit signals who holds the genuine power. And finally, the unclean spirit instantly recognises Jesus, call him by name. He cries out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? The crowd in the synagogue recognised something special about Jesus. As the passage finishes, at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. So as we reflect on this passage from Mark, we can perhaps reflect on the whole of Mark's Gospel and with the privilege of hindsight recognise who Jesus is. So, I finish by perhaps encouraging you to contemplate on authority and power in our lives by asking some simple but challenging questions. Who has the authority in our lives? And where does that authority come from? Do those to whom we give authority use it well? And what can we learn from these difficult times? And where is God's love in all of this?
and perhaps as you contemplate those questions you can reflect on the words of our next hymn open the eyes of my heart lord i want to see you second reading comes from the New Testament once more and from 1 Corinthians 8 verses 1 to 13. Now about food sacrificed to idols, we know that. We all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. So then, about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things come and from whom we live, and there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things come and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificed food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a god. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us nearer to God. We are no worse if we do not eat, and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with whom a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, 
won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in the way this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will not I will never eat meat again, so that I will not cause them to fall. Amen. In my second talk, I thought to try and make sense of what can be quite a confusing piece of scripture from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. To start with, let me bring the writing to, into a modern context. Today, vegetarianism and veganism are very much on the increase in the United Kingdom. And don't take my word for it. Look up veganism on Google and one site returns the statistic that the number of vegans living in the UK could rise by 327% this year. And this is according to a new study by the comparison site Finder. People are choosing very different diets these days. Diane will often reflect on how her granddad viewed tins of spaghetti hoops with suspicion. Oh, how times have changed. And one thing that disturbs me about this rise in alternative diets is that it can be used to divide people once more. There is a danger that we have something else with which to criticise the actions of those around us, rather than allowing people the liberty to choose and follow their own consciences. And this is exactly what Paul is writing about. He's reflecting on the challenges of knowledge and what truth might lead to. It would appear that questions were being raised about the practice of eating meat sacrificed to idols. And perhaps some unpleasantness was being noticed by Paul surrounding this issue by those people who were experienced in this new faith and those who were not. Gentiles, newly converted to the Christian faith, may have been reminded of previous practice in their pagan lives, and in particular, demonic worship when sharing meals containing sacrificed meat. As novices in the new faith, these new converts would have been challenged by this new liberty afforded to them regarding food. They struggle to come to terms with the notion of eating such meats. I imagine that perhaps when being sold at market, because of its limitations, this sacrificed meat may have been cheaper than unsacrificed meats. The threat of Paul's discourse here, the thread of Paul's discourse here is a consolatory one, encouraging those experienced in the new faith those with a better understanding, not to look down on the less experienced Christians. As Paul writes, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. This passage from, from Paul encourages the new church to act in a way that is beneficial to all believers, and not to behave in such a way as to confuse or disturb new believers. There is a calling from Paul for sensitivity towards each other and, of course, the encouragement to build each other up. Paul highlights the requirement for care and respect for others in their particular stages of their faith journey. The important issue being that of a healthy unit, a healthy unity within the Christian community. Paul can be seen here as challenging any possible developing disagreement by inspiring the community to engage with each other with compassion, restraint and consideration for those with views, experience and background different from their own. 
Paul's focus on love builds up, highlights the need amongst the church in Corinth to support each other in their faith journeys, to be understanding of each other and encouraging of each other in their learning and behaviour. Today in our churches we are struggling to attract newcomers to the faith. Perhaps in the past we have been a little puffed up in our knowing. As we survey our communities we are faced with the fresh challenges of ignorance to the Christian faith. In the past and not that long ago as churches we could at least rely on schools teaching pupils the Lord's Prayer. I remember this from my primary school days. However, today's religious education in schools must cover a whole facet of faiths and non-faith. We as churches need to be prepared to guide those with little or no faith to come to know the love of Jesus. We have to be prepared to accept there are many who will not have even seen a Bible, let alone read any of it. Nor is it helpful or inspiring to the unchurched to be presented with a list of what you can and cannot do as Christians. We can only encourage those into faith by pointing to the cross and describing how much our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ loves us all. Amen. And as we think about and reflect on that passage, perhaps we could ask for God's guidance in our next hymn. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. So we come together with our prayers for others. We start with a moment's silence to reflect on the many lives affected by the coronavirus. Most holy friend, saviour of those who call on you, Please give us more of the compassion and authority of Jesus. Embolden us to heal the multiple diseases 
that afflict humanity and drive out the demons that afflict our contemporary world. Hear us, O God, loving God, in your abundant grace, hear our prayers. Send your agents to lands that lie under darkness and oppression, where government is corrupt, justice is rare, abuse is endemic, and the weak and the poor have nowhere to turn for hope. Please increase the spiritual authority of the Red Cross, amnesty and the Christian World Service to more adequately adequately become your ready agents of compassion, justice, practical aid, reconciliation and peace. Hear us, O God, loving God in your abundant grace, hear our prayers. Send your messengers into situations where the coronavirus is reaping a grim harvest. Especially we pray for those nations struggling like ours to control new variants of this deadly virus. Please give authority to the people of disciplined compassion to provide pharmaceutical help, nursing care and better health education that will drive out the demons of suspicion and distrust so that the vaccines may be more widely administered. Hear us, O oh God, loving God, in your abundant grace, hear our prayers. Send your servants into places where food is scarce and crops are poor. Please strengthen the authority of those local leaders and outside advisers who seek to empower the people to conserve water, dig new wells, plant trees, grow new food crops farm fish and start cottage industries and obtain better prices for their goods. Hear us, O God, loving God, in your abundant grace, hear our prayers. Send your human angels of mercy into situations both here and abroad where there is neglect, illness, sorrow, frustration and anger. Please give some of the compassionate authority of Jesus to chaplains in hospitals and prisons, to nurses and ambulance officers, physicians and surgeons, social workers, foster parents, police officers and counsellors. Hear us, O God, loving God in your abundant grace, hear our prayers. Send your gifts of comfort and great joy among the many congregations of your church. May more of the spiritual authority of Jesus empower every ordinary church member. And the wisdom and compassion of Jesus enlarge the ministries of lay leaders and ordained ministers. By the grace of Christ, May our deeds more adequately match our creeds and our love expand to embrace those on the edges of our societies. Hear us, O oh God, loving God, in your abundant grace, hear our prayers. God, our most holy friend, in your mercy, may we go from strength to strength in the things of the Spirit, and become lovers and the agents of that holy awe, which is the beginning of true wisdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we sing together our final hymn. O Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end.
close with a blessing. Go forth replenished by the grace and mercy of God, blessed by the healing love of Jesus, energised by the limitless power of the Holy Spirit. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Hello, and uh, in addition to our Sunday worship uh, videos, we're going to try and experiment with regards to church notices. Um, we're mindful that uh, we would always give out church notices during a Sunday worship if we were meeting in public, and we've not been doing this. So we're going to tell you what uh, is happening this week in church uh, online and um, invite you to contact the ministry team or if you know the organiser of the event contact them directly to 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 join in um, we're more than happy for people to join in to as many events as they can so this week um, of course we've got the service on the, that you'll be listening to and then on monday wednesday thursday and friday there are 9 a.m prayers which led by yvonne and you can get the joining details for those from Yvonne uh, on the 1st of February uh, at 10.30 a.m. We have a coffee and chat on Zoom. Again, uh, details um, from Yvonne or from myself. Um, and you're more than welcome to join and uh, have a natter about all things. Covid or otherwise, family news, anything you want to share, it'd be great to, to see you there. I'm leading prayers on Tuesday morning at 11am uh, using the um, material that I've been using and posting online and uh, walking my presence material. So uh, you're welcome to join me on that and if you want to just get in touch with me and uh, I'll send you the joining details for that. Uh, there's a house group looking at holy habits uh, at 7.45 on Tuesday as well. And that's led by Sue Davis. And again, contact Sue or myself or Yvonne uh, to get details of that as well. So a little bit of news about what's happening. Uh, there's quite a lot goes on in our church. And even though we're closed as a building, the church are still meeting together and uh, we'd love you to join one of these events we've also got some uh, availability for um, meals on fridays we're um, delivering meals to uh, those that um, live on their own particularly but uh, it's not exclusively for them uh, uh, great chef claire from warwick road is um, preparing meals and has been for some time now and uh, you're welcome to uh, place an order and uh, have a meal on delivered to your door on Friday. Um, again, contact uh, myself for details of this or look at your connections magazine. There's a menu in there and you're more than welcome to join. It's not an exclusive club. Anybody can take part and get themselves a home cooked, professionally cooked meal from Claire. So don't feel like you're excluded. Uh, anybody can uh, get in touch with us and let us know uh, what your needs are. Uh, and the notices keep coming. One additional notice for this week. Uh, Poetry Cafe will meet on the first Thursday of each month during the COVID-19 outbreak. They've been meeting online at 2 p.m. So on Thursday, 2 p.m., first Sunday of every month. And they share two or three poems and these are usually set from a theme but don't have to be you don't have to so the next meeting is on thursday the 4th of february and the theme is darkness so all are welcome to join so uh, if you're a great poet or not it doesn't matter you're welcome to join and share and um, could you please contact craig muir or david lathbury should you wish to join this uh, poetry cafe yeah, stay in touch, stay safe and stay well and uh, see you again soon. Bye bye for now.